there's one more picture. And uh, I'm not going to address this up here. Uh, this little corner here is labeled not very useful. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of put a big X to that. The X isn't there on the original videos. And I do use this to motivate what we're doing down here, at least to give us an idea how the notation works. But um, this is very useful. Okay. C1 times this column vector plus C2 times this column vector equals this column vector. Question is, is there a solution? Can we find C1 and C2 that make it so? Okay, this equation is of the form C1 V1 plus C2 V2 equals W, where V1 is regarded as a ve vector, V2 is a vector, and W as a vector. And these vectors can be represented in two-dimensional on a two-dimensional coordinate system, and I kind of do that over here. Uh, but if you understand a little bit about vectors, uh, that's pretty obvious. If you don't, I'll mention it here just to give you a little bit of a heads up. Okay, so we have this vector equation. <coughs> the answer to this vector equation is uh, either we can find a C1 and a C2 that make it so, or we can't. So the question we're answering with this equation is, are there multiples of the vectors v1 and v2, which are these vectors and this vector and this vector, that add up to our vector w, which is this vector? Okay? Can we find numbers to multiply by this one and this one so that we get this one? Can these vectors be combined in some way to give us this vector? Again, the equation is of the form c1 v1 plus c2 v2 equals w. Again, v1 v2 v2 and W are vectors. So the question now is again, can we find C1 and C2 to make this so? If so, that means there's a multiple of V1 and a multiple of V2 that add up to W. It's a very, very important question. Okay, well, let's see what this means. Okay, C1 V1 would then be C1 times the 1, 4 vector. C2 would be C2 V2 would be C2 times the 2, 8 vector, and W is the 4, 24 vector. Well, if we multiply through by the constant using rules we know for matrix multiplication, uh, we get C1, 4, C2, 2, C2, C1, 4, C1, 2, C2, 8, C2, and 4, 24 over here. Um, and at this point, I noted that uh, the second component is always 4 times the first here and here. Here it's 6 times the first. You can't add two, com two vectors. Uh, where the second component is four times the first and get a vector for the second component is anything but four times the first so you're not going to be able to do it but we're not going to uh, assume we have that insight at this point. We're going to see that it's not possible. Okay well we continue with this addition and we put it into this form. You know, this column vector plus this column vector we just add the two first elements and we get the first element of our sum. Add the two second elements we get the second element of our sum. So we have this and then this can be written as the matrix equation 1, 2, 4, 8 times the vector C1, C2 equals the vector 4, 24. This is of the form AC equals W just like an AX equals B so that C equals A inverse times W again with the caveat if A inverse exists. Well this is our old friend A inverse doesn't exist Determinant is clearly zero if you know about determinants. Or if you row reduce it, you're going to get a row of zeros down here. You're never going to get this down to the identity matrix. Okay? So, you know, I say again, answering my question here, yes, if A equals this is invertible or non-singular. However, it ain't, so it ain't possible. In other words, A is not non-singular, so it's not possible to reduce it to the identity, you don't have an inverse. Now we talk a little bit about the geometric picture. Um, these vectors can be represented by arrows. The vector, column vector 2, 8 is represented by a vector that could be uh, originating at the origin. We let the vector originate at the origin and we move over 1, 2, 3, 4 units, uh, one, 1, 2 units corresponding to the 2 here and then we move up eight units corresponding to the eight and we draw a vector from the origin up to that point, vector being represented by an arrow. 
the vector 1, 4 is similarly represented over 1, up 4, and our vector 4, 24, which I kind of had yeah, to squeeze in, and it really kind of goes out of our picture, but it's a bigger vector. Um, now the question is, can we combine th these two vectors, or multiples of these two vectors, in some way to get this vector? And the answer is no, because any multiple of these two vectors, any sum of multiples of these two vectors, will still have that 4 to 1 ratio between the uh, second and the first, or the y component and the x component of the vector. And this one has a 6 to 1 ratio. It's not going to happen. Uh, now, what if the two vectors were like, instead of being like this, were like this? And our w vector was here. Well, we could draw, starting from the uh, initial point of our w vector, we could draw a line parallel to the v1 vector, to our first vector. Okay, if this is our v1, um, then any multiple of v1, any c1, v1, is going to lie along this line, and by choosing the right c1, we can have the vector lie anywhere along this line. And similarly with the vector v2, um, we want our sum to start here and end here. If we draw a line parallel to the vector v2, going both ways, it'll intersect the line that we drew from the initial point uh, parallel to v1, and that intersection point will be the end of our c1 v1 vector, and the initial point of our c2 v2 vector. And the, the c2 v2 vector, of course, will end up at the terminal point of w, so that the c1 v1 plus the c2 v2 equals the w vector. Now, if you don't know a lot about vectors, take that as kind of a, a, a ballpark preview. Uh, let your neurons start working on it, but don't worry about it. Okay, you'll get it when we do it step by step.